Reflection is also in. See who will be leading the students in the 2009-2010 school year. Learn how Bible Monitor could fit into your school schedule and take a look at how some students are filling their spare time this spring. Hear these stories and more coming up next on College Week. Majeski Fine Arts Center on the campus of the University of Sioux Falls. This is College Week. With Lavelle Jackson, Tracy Erdman, and Jerry Coxwell Sports. Good morning. I'm Lavelle Jackson. And I'm Tracy Erdman. Thanks for joining us. Elections for student body president were held Monday through Wednesday of this week. With more information from the campaign trail, here's College Week's Joshua Duncan. The race for student association president and vice president has been underway as candidate teams Bill Ballard and Alan Sazma, Derek Hackett and Justin Quaken, and incumbent Ronnie Hawkins and Laura Lee Grimius campaigned through posters, talking with students, debates, and holding the first ever Cougar Party convention. Each candidate team had a different platform. Hawkins and Grimius proposed changes in inner visitation policy, allowing honor students to live off campus, club involvement in campus affairs, and the amount of community service done by clubs. Bowder and Sazma have a three-point plan of service, visibility, and accountability through clubs and campus involvement in service projects to alert students to Senate meeting proceedings and to have a representative meet with the RDs to assess dorm needs. Akin and Quicken are proposing for longer hours in the Stewart Center, increased intramural sports, and to push to have the Stewart Center open for 24 hours a day for student use. Um, I think each one of the uh, candidates was able to articulate themselves very well. They knew the issues. Uh, they were able to both be able to identify the problems and come up with a, uh, some sort of solution, if, if not work on a solution for each one of the problems. After coming to tonight's debate, uh, my deciding factor will be on how people are using their money. If it's been used, in, if it's been used for uh, for entertainment, for all the students like TVs, DVD players, uh, I'm not really going to lean towards that. But if, if there's any kind of reach out towards the community uh, service projects as a Christian school, I think we should be doing that kind of thing. So that's uh, that's how my vote will end up factoring into how I put a check mark in the email box. Former Student Association President Travis Late came out in support and spoke at the Cougar Convention. Awesome. He spoke about what uh, students are looking for in a president. Year. You know, when I served, a lot of law students just wanted somebody there for them, somebody to listen to their concerns. Um, you can fight a lot of battles by just allowing somebody to voice what they're passionate about and just hear them out. And so by having the student by president's office down in Java City where all the students hang out, it's a great way for those students to voice their opinion to that individual and have that trust that that person is going to hopefully go and visit with somebody else about that same issue and something can get done because that's, that's how it started in my year was one issue started the fire on me and I said, okay, I'm going to go and take it to the administrative uh, individual. So that's kind of how it goes, you know, in, in a roundabout way. Thanks, Josh. Voting ended Wednesday at midnight, and our president is Ronnie Hawkins. Congratulations, Ronnie. Good luck with next year's term. It's time for all secret agents to come out of hiding. The CIA, Cougar Intelligence Agency, has announced his, stu his super sleuth. Students completed missions throughout the week, including brush buys, photo surveillance, and dead drops and code breaking to see who could earn the title of super sleuth. Through mission failures and sabotage, students dropped out one by one, leaving one, only one. Kristen Bouchena proved her skills through a week of full, com, a cool, full, co, full of covert activities, earning a title of Super Sloop. Future students' activities included elementary week, com, complete with a spelling bee and Carmen San Diego trivia, as well as spring formal. April is Sexual Assault Awareness Month. USF campus safety advocate Kristen Fick and other USF students are helping raise awareness about this important cause on campus. Recently, USF students participated in a day of action. Tables were set up in Java City during the lunch hour and students were encouraged to sign pledges to help stop sexual assault. Other upcoming opportunities with this cause include the Walk a Mile in Her Shoes and the Feel Comfortable in Your Jeans event. For more information about these events, students should check their campus emails. Coming up next, we'll have an inside look at the choir's Midwest Spring Tour. Don't go away. Over the spring break, the choir toured 
the Midwest with an in-depth look at, at the tour. Here's College Week's Daniel Hodges has. The University of Sioux Falls Concert Chorale boarded a Greyhound bus this spring break, covering six states in nine days. Yay! Yay! I love choir. I'm really excited about singing for people all over the Midwest and to see all sorts of places like Lawrence, Kansas and Denver, Colorado. About when have to be the potlucks because I know that church women are the best in the world. Um, I don't think it's debatable. Yeah, I love it. So that's that's what I'm excited about. The 44 member choir sang in various churches and schools around the Midwest. The day to day routine began with the rehearsal, so that the choir would be able to get used to the new performance space. Each church provided a potluck in order to feed the singers after rehearsal and a long day of traveling. And I pray that you would bless this. Story. And every night after a time of reflection and prayer, the singers took to the stage. Each day the choir would spend the night with the host family return the next morning and do it all over again. But it wasn't always all work and no play, as the choir members participated in several service projects. And then we went and sang through three floors of kids, and it was a really neat experience because it was probably um, the most exciting thing that had happened to them for a very long time was to have these people come and sing for them, and it was just a really neat, a really, really, once-in-a-lifetime feeling. On the ninth day, the singers returned home to Sioux Falls to have a home concert in St. Joseph's Cathedral. Next time the concert chorale tours, it will be abroad in Italy, January 2010. For College Week, I'm Daniel Hodges. Academic advising for the fall of 2009 is underway and with it comes a new Bible minor. With Here's College Week's Shelley Jacobs. Getting this fall, USF students will have the ability to pick up a minor in Biblical Studies. This newly added opportunity provides students with the ability to continue on their education in the Bible. Dr. John Higgle, a theology professor at the university, discusses what the course requirements are for this minor. Everybody who has taken introduction to the Bible is ready to do the Bible minor and so there are a whole series of courses that we offer in the Bible. There are a regular series of courses, Jesus and the Gospels, Letters of Paul, Books of Hebrews to Revelation. We offer Old Testament courses uh, a couple times a year and then there will be uh, elective courses in this or that book of the Bible plus some topical things. Higgle says that he is excited about the ability to add new courses to the theology curriculum. At USF, two Bible courses are a part of the liberal arts requirement. With these two courses, Higgle hopes that students will want to continue on learning about the Bible. Junior Karen Niederhauser shares what got her interested in the Bible minor. Well, I really like the theology classes at USF. I just started taking them because you have to for the prerequisite. Um, for taking Intro to Bible and Intro to Christian Thought, and I really liked the professors and the classes, and then I just kind of started taking them, and um, Dr. John Higgle talked to me about the Bible minor, and it sounded very interesting. Higgle hopes that students will take this new opportunity to further explore the scriptures. And I think a lot of the students who will end up doing this are people who did not come here to study the Bible, that didn't really know the Bible all that well, and then say, hey, this is for me, I, uh, I enjoy digging into this kind of stuff and, and going deeper. So uh, that's what we hope for. Niederhauser expresses that this minor could help involve more students in the religious activities provided at USF. I think um, the more classes that you take, the more interested you are going to become just because the theology professors at USF are so good and the classes are so interesting that you might just get a little bit more of a hunger for um, theology and what it all has to offer. The Bible Minor will be available to all students starting in the fall of 2009. For College Week, I'm Shelley Jacobs. USF students are giving back to the community simply by taking an after school job. Here's College Week's Stephanie Chmielewski with more on the story. At the YMCA after school program, kids can be kids, having fun playing games and making new friends. 
Andrea Thorson, the site director at Whittier Middle School, explains a typical day for students. Many activities, uh, some of them basics, computer lab, uh, homework help, uh, the gym, they get out and dance a lot. We uh, dance music, uh, the game room, where we have carpet ball and ping pong. Kylie Barnes, an ASP employee, explains how the economic cutbacks have affected the types of field trips and snacks they're able to provide. This year they haven't gotten as many opportunities and our big outing will be to the YMCA to go swimming or something like that or to play a game there which is free of cost because we have to cut down on things like that. Also snacks last year we were able to buy them a lot more things, a lot more variety, but this year we have to get all of our food from the food bank and it's just whatever's left and whatever has been donated and it has to last us the entire month. We go shopping once a month. It has to last us the entire month and um, unfortunately some of the staff members have had to pay out of pocket for some of the snacks because we've run out and we just don't, <laughs> in our hearts, we just can't let those kids go without a snack that day because, for instance, our school is a Division One school and that means that a majority of the students have paid lunches by the government or reduced cost lunches and so sometimes when they get home they won't have supper that night because they come from low-income families and so we always want to make sure they go home with at least something more in their stomachs than what they had for lunch and unfortunately sometimes it's just a sucker. Even with the program shortcomings the students are excited to be in a safe and fun environment while the staff count their blessings from each smiling face. They love that you're there for them, and that just makes your day when you come to that program and they're so excited that someone cares for them and someone's excited that they're there at the program. And that, that brightens any day that I'm having a bad day, go there and it turns, turns you around, makes you see it in a different perspective. Some days I'll have the worst days when I go in, but when I leave, you know, I just had a good interaction with a kid and I really got through to them or they really just made me laugh hysterically and I leave just feeling so happy. Like we have crafts and sometimes the students will make us, you know, a special craft and they'll give it to a staff member that they really like and it just like brightens our day like no other. So it's a really rewarding program. We welcome volunteers and it's a really fun program to be a part of and if you can give donations that would be awesome because these kids are definitely in need and we do like to try to give them as many of the opportunities we've been blessed with through our lives because they unfortunately don't get those at home so we take any help we can. For USF College Week, I'm Stephanie Chmielewski. If you would like to volunteer your time or money, please call the YMCA at 331-3190. Coming up after the break, Joshua Duncan sits down with the campus pastor, Devin Toon. We'll be right back. Good morning and welcome to Crosstalk. I'm Joshua Duncan. This morning we have Dennis Toon with us. Good morning, Dennis. How are you? I'm doing well and I'm glad to be here and thanks for the good coffee this morning. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> glad you could join us this morning. So tell us, Dennis, you know, for incoming freshmen, uh, they see you walking around campus. What are some of your roles or responsibilities or what, what kind of services can, do you offer them? Well, campus ministry involves several factions. Uh, first of all, we have chapel on a weekly basis. And so chapel at Tuesday at 10. And then we have small groups throughout the week that I help facilitate. Uh, some of them I'm involved in. Some of them I just may, you know, we just re provide resources for. There's a, almost every night on this campus there's some kind of spiritual life activity, a small group or we have some uh, discussion groups. And then we also do uh, service projects in the community. Okay. And we have a number of things going there as well. So where can students find out that information, how they can get involved with those campus ministries yeah. or service projects? The best ways to find out about campus ministry is first of all come to chapel because that's where we disseminate a lot of information. Also we do campus ministry emails. We also do posters uh, up on campus. But my office is in the student development office in Java City area. Okay. So uh, tell us, uh, what time is chapel? Chapel's For Tuesday at 10 o'clock. And then once in a while we do special events on Thursday nights, but mainly chapel tu Tuesday morning at 10 o'clock. Okay. Now is chapel the same each week? No. We change it uh, quite a bit. And it depends on, you know, we have guest speakers. Uh, we've had this semester we had Shane Claiborne, who's uh, uh, internationally, becoming an internationally recognized uh, Christian leader okay. uh, as a young man. Uh, an author. We had him uh, last semester. We had uh, a variety of, of visitors as well. So we, uh, and we use campus people as well. And uh, then I fill in and speak about every other week or something like that. Great, great. So, so tell us, 
Um, what are some of the service projects or community projects that USF, ha USF has been involved in this year? Um, one of the best things USF does, I can't take any credit for, it is it is the uh, mentoring program through the Criminal Justice Department. And okay. we help, the nice thing about USF is we work together on things. And uh, the Criminal Justice Department started this, we continue to help feed people into that. Uh, last year we had over 150 students do mentoring at Terry Redland Elementary. And these were with kids that were identified as at risk in some way, wow. shape, or form. So our students did a wonderful job there. We have dozens. We have never been able to actually get an accurate count how many of our students are involved in churches in some capacity, but the numbers are quite surprising. We have students that are paid staff, uh, volunteer staff, in a variety of churches in a variety of roles. And then we have students that are doing other things through Big Brother, Big Sister programs, through serving meals. Uh, our students have been involved in the banquet over the years in a variety of ways, which is serving meals to the low-income people. Uh, those are just a few of the places, uh, and there are many more in which our students have been plugged in uh, this year alone and over the past as well. So is there any special type of training a student would have to go through to be a mentor or mm -hmm. do any of those other programs? There's always about? an orientation dependent upon the connection that they have. A lot of times churches will, for example, if there's a ministry or a one-time event, they'll just say, uh, we need this, these people, can you come? And we'll, we'll tell you how to do this when you show up. The main thing you need is somebody who has a willingness to get involved. And a lot of times students have that willingness, they just need that little extra nudge to mm -hmm. uh, get there, show up, and, and then find out that the biggest ministry you many times have is simply being there. Uh, we've had students go up to the penitentiary on a regular basis over the last 18 years and attend worship services and simply be there with the inmates as they, they worship together. And it's remarkable how inmates uh, are encouraged by young people, by college-age students, being around them. And uh, so that's just one ministry where it's so easy, it's showing up and being a ministry of presence. Now, USF is not only involved in local uh, missions, but also we do some international things. What, what are those? Right. Uh, we've had, for the last several years now, students have been involved in uh, Robin's Nest Orphanage in Jamaica, outside of Montego Bay, uh, which sounds exotic and sounds like a great uh, vacation, but it's actually hard work. Uh, they live in an orphanage with the orphans wow. and work, and uh, with uh, through Paula Mercoris is our contact with that. She has okay. done a wonderful job of leading students down. They've been doing that. Uh, students have gone to Mexico on a regular basis. Uh, students have worked with Habitat for Humanity at Rosebud Reservation on a regular basis as well. We'll be going there next fall again to work on a project. And uh, then there's other, other areas as well. We've had, we had three students go to Brazil over spring break and work in a mission project with Campus Crusade for Christ. And uh, we're having a number of students that are planning to go out with various organizations, Ghana, going to Ghana, Africa, Swaziland, Africa. Uh, and uh, those are just a few things that come off the top of my head. Um, I know uh, USF students were set to go to Juarez, Mexico, uh, right. but with the crime rate that went up, what kind of happened with the, with the fundraising and things like that? This was one of those great disappointments, and uh, it's, we students had th raised thousands of dollars so we could build a house in Juarez, Mexico. We had 18 students that were going to go and build, and uh, because of the escalating crime rate, at the last minute we had to cancel the project. However, we did send down $3,500 uh, to build for, for the staff to build, because they, now they are relocating and redesigning their strategy. But a tremendous disappointment that our students had worked so hard. Uh, the other money that was raised were setting aside for future mission projects. That's great. I know uh, the Israel trip's coming up. How can students find out about that so they can start fundraising early? One more thing. Yeah, I Israel is uh, a, a learning experience, a spiritual pilgrimage. Uh, we'll go in interim in January, uh, for January 12th. And uh, if students are interested, they need to talk to me about that. We've already had 24 students that showed an interest, so we'll go from there. That's great. That's great. Thank you for joining us this morning, Dennis. Uh, thank you for this is another edition of USF Cross Talk. I'm Joshua Duncan. Tune in next week as Stephanie Chemleski sits down with Kristen Fick. And now it's time for sports with college sports reporter Jerry Coxwell. So Jerry, what's going on in the Cougar Nation? Uh, we got a little uh, baseball that happened this past week. Uh, coming off a sweep against rival Mount Marty. The USF baseball team traveled to Orange City, Iowa, where they split a doubleheader against Northwestern, taking Game 1 16-4 while dropping Game 2 5-2. In Game 1, the Cougars were led by Nick Armstrong as he hit two home runs while driving in six. The team scored seven runs apiece in both the third and fourth innings. 
Game two was more of a barn burner. With the score tied at two in the sixth, the Raiders were able to bring home three, as Jordan Lane hit the game-clinching two-run double. With the split, the Cougars now sit at 11 and 12 on the season. Next up for the Cougars is a doubleheader against Briar Cliff, which is scheduled for today, April 9th, at 2 and 4 p.m. in Sioux City. And now to NASCAR. It was a memorable afternoon for Jeff Gordon, as he not only won for the first time in 47 races, but he also broke through for the first time at Texas Motor Speedway, taking a resounding victory in the Samsung 500 on Sunday. Gordon, who started second, led a race high 105 laps, including the final 33 after a terrific pit stop put him ahead of everyone. Hendrick teammate Jimmy Johnson finished a close second, while Tony Stewart came home fourth and Mark Martin ended up in sixth. Next up for the NASCAR drivers is the Subway 500, held at Phoenix International Raceway in Glendale, Arizona, on Saturday night, April 18th, beginning at around 6.45 p.m. Central Time. Gordon and Johnson have won the previous four races held there. And that's sports for today. Thank you very much, Jerry. You're welcome. Okay. In spite of last weekend's freak blizzard, spring has started to show its sunny face. College Week's Ian Bloomer takes a look at some springtime activities. With the snow melting and temperatures rising, spring sports are getting underway. We asked some students here on campus what spring sport they're looking forward to the most. I'm looking forward to um, track because I throw the shot. Actually, I'm looking forward to the track outdoor season. Uh, I'm looking forward to tennis the most. Sand volleyball I play during the summer and then basketball if I can. Volleyball. Because it's fun in the off season, you can just work on getting better. The spring sport I'm looking forward to most is spring ball starting. I'm ready to get ready back to practice and get better and win another national championship. We also asked, what are some other activities that students are looking forward to this summer? When it's nice out, I like to go play disc golf. I love playing disc golf. I like to go frisbee golfing. Maybe play some frisbee golf. It'll be fun. With some grill outside, I know. Uh, grilling, if that's a hobby. I, I like to destroy, so I think that's what I'm going to do. Uh, in the summertime, I like to go to the lake in Watertown. Go jet skiing and boating and stuff, so. Uh, I'm looking forward to fishing, because I love fish, love being outdoors. Uh, I just work a lot. Babysitting my little cousins and taking them to the pool. Just being able to work outside, get in the tan, um, gotta look good for the ladies, you know, so. Not everyone has the same hobbies, but the one thing everyone agreed upon is that they will not miss the snow. I think the cold weather and snow is only good for uh, the pre-Christmas season, so anything after that is just miserable. I will definitely not miss the snow. I would never miss the snow. If it never snowed again, I wouldn't be sad. Not at all. Nope. No. No. Not at all. Absolutely not. I'm from southern Indiana, so I don't like winter, period. For College Week, I'm Ian Bloomer. And that wraps up another edition of USF College Week. I'm Tracy Erdman. And I'm Lavelle Jackson. Have a great day and a happy Easter. College week is uh, is just getting underway, and I'm I'm really pleased with the uh, with the overall talent of the group. But um, there's this new floor director, and I'm just having problems with her. Good morning, everybody. We're here to type this show. Okay, y'all ready? Y'all ready? Okay, Ronan five, four, three. The show has stirred it. The show stirred it and you're not talking and that's the whole point of the show. You guys got to talk. Good morning and welcome to USF College Week. I'm your host Lavelle Jackson and right here sitting next to me is... Tra Tracy. I'm Tracy Erdman. And just recently we sat down with Karen Sumner to talk about her upcoming spring break trip to Mexico. Here's a little clip. Karen! Karen Sumner! Karen Sumner! Can I come? Can I come? Karen, do you think there's still room for me? Karen, hold on! 
Karen, look, I have my hammer. I have my hammer. I just, I keep it in my pocket all the time. And I just want to build a house for the poor Mexicans. Karen, listen, listen. Don't do your stuff. It'll burn you. That means, where's the bathroom in Mexican? I know the language. Yeah, she's, uh, sh she's going to need to go back to Target. For Curlet Week, I'm the Target lady. Do we have more of these?